Let's talk about how radioactivity affects the body and what occurs when there's a disaster. The basis of radiation, it's degrading and it's sending reactive materials out into the environment. If it touches you, it ends up knocking electrons off of your DNA. When your body attempts to reassemble that DNA, it may not always have enough material to do so. Remember your DNA requires a template in order to figure out what code should have been there. What we end up seeing with people who have been really damaged by radiation is that their DNA literally falls apart. When we're looking at some of the victims of radiation poisoning, that's what happened to Hisashi Oichi. Neither of them had enough experience to work with what they were working with. They ended up over enriching it and he was exposed to a very large amount of radiation. Now, when people are exposed to radiation, they still have some of their cells that are functioning, but when it comes to dividing and healing damage, they no longer have a functional code. That is why they seem to get better for a little bit, and then ultimately their bodies fall apart. At the time, doctors did everything they could to save him. They weren't torturing him, as is often said that it was an experiment. That's just not the case, but it is ugly. Now, you may have also heard that medical practitioners can be put at risk by working with patients who have been exposed to radiation. This happened when first responders went to put out the fire and start taking care of those who were immediately injured. When they were brought back to the hospital, the medical staff was then exposed to radiation, and there's two reasons for this. With particles that are giving off alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, they don't make the person radioactive per se. With radioactive particulates, they can get on the skin and even in your body if you've eaten radioactive material. They can then expose others to radiation in a secondary manner. That's why hazmat suits need to be cleaned. With neutron radiation, which is the kind that we get with nuclear facilities and weapons, that does make you radioactive. This is also another reason why areas that have been exposed to nuclear disasters can remain dangerous for many years to come. But in those cases, we're talking about acute exposure. I think what happens to animal life, to life in general, when they're exposed to radiation over a long period of time is more interesting. This is the tomb at Runet Island. When many countries were just first testing out nuclear bombs, they did it in the Pacific, and they even paid the people who lived there to let them test bombs. I don't think they knew what that meant. After the tests were over, they cleaned up the topsoil and put it in a container with concrete. You can actually see the size of it. Those are people standing on top of it. It started to leak over time, and the people that live there have had greater rates of cancer and birth defects. That is all something that is still going on, but the world seems to have forgotten about. In humans, damage to your DNA is slowly going to overtake your system, and ultimately, you'll suffer from cancers. In animals, those that reproduce quickly are going to do better, and the same goes for bacteria and fungi. Now, I do use gamma radiation to sterilize lab equipment with very high doses. It can get rid of just about everything except for fungus, freaking immortal stuff. If it's a lower dose, it can actually increase the rate of mutation. And then we see things like bacteria on the ISS getting dosed with higher levels of radiation. They're more quickly able to overcome antibiotics and they develop antibiotic resistance. In fact, this is so well established, it's something that everyone does with an Ames test. You give bacteria a little bit of a mutagen, and then you see if they're able to quickly evolve a resistance to an antibiotic they didn't previously have resistance to. When it comes to radioactive disasters, at least the ones that are caused by nuclear meltdowns and not nuclear war, we are going to see a progression of ones that are less bad. And that's because these things are so awful that we learn from them and we put in more safeguards. The reason that the Fukushima disaster was not as bad as what happened in Chernobyl, and it was multifaceted, having the ocean may have helped dilute it, but they already had safety mechanisms in place so that if there was a meltdown, they would automatically shut off. Those same mechanisms were not there in Chernobyl. They also did not have the explosion and the fire that Chernobyl had. They learned that the graphite may not have been a very good idea because it's very flammable. If there's a particular aspect of this or something that you would like a deep dive on, let me know. I'm happy to do it.